Hello there and welcome back to my channel, Rover Turbo. This video is about um, an Astra K, Astra J, more specifically the error code P0401, which is EGR valve flow insufficient. Now, it's a bit of a long story on this engine. I'm not gonna go into it because that's, that, that's not what this video is about. But the complications that I've been having with this engine and this car, um, I thought were contributing to the problem that I was having um, which is the EGR, it's had a replacement engine put in it, uh, blah, blah, blah. So basically, the code on this keeps coming up, drives perfectly fine, not an issue, but it keeps coming up with this code. I've already replaced the, or take, taken out the EGR sensor, cleaned it, um, replaced it with another EGR sensor, and it kept coming up with EGR, insufficient flow, engine management light on, etc., etc., etc. So, I'm a bit, I was a bit perplexed as to what it is that was causing this problem um, because it's not the EGR. I've done a bit of Googling and everyone says EGR, EGR, EGR. But of course, the EGR goes through the EGR cooler. Now, the engine knows what the flow is because of the math sensor. So if the, it knows exactly how much air is going through the engine when the EGR is supposed to be open, when it's supposed to be closed, when the bike, when the bypass on the cooler is open or closed so that's why it's coming up with insufficient flow because it doesn't have the correct amount of flow through the engine or what it thinks it should be so what i've done is change the egr cooler it's a little bit more complicated than that i'll show you so this is the egr cooler uh, most modern diesels um modern diesels from 2010 anything that has a dpf normally or anything that has an egr to be honest um, will have an EGR cooler because you're putting the hot gases from the exhaust back into the engine so it goes through this cooler which is a, a water to air um, heat exchanger which cools the gases as it goes through the um, EGR cooler because there's there's water passage that goes in and there's a water passage that goes out and then there's also um, a bypass flap here which uses vacuum in this particular case to basically open a flap inside which allows the air to bypass the actual cooler itself so what i'm going to do um well actually before i get ahead of myself what i've already done is i've already replaced the egr cooler with another one that i had off of a spare engine now i cleaned the egr cooler out um separately out of the car so i've cleaned it through i used um mr muscle basically is what i use oven cleaner gets rid of coke burnt on stains doesn't it so put that through it, water, air, blast it through, cleaned out the cooler as much as I possibly could. And I've just replaced that EGR cooler with the original EGR valve and the engine air management light and the code has just disappeared. I didn't clear the codes, they've just disappeared. So I've had it running now for a bit um, and the code hasn't come back. Now obviously I've got to drive it to see whether it's going to come back because it does stay off um, for a, a short period of time, not very long, a few miles and then it comes back on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this. This was the one that was on the car which said that it was a insufficient flow. So this is the, the end. It's got the two end pieces which bolt on. So I'm going to unbolt the end pieces and have actually look through here to see how blocked it is. Because this is the original cooler off of the original engine in this car, which did, had done 125,000 miles and the engine was seized when I got it. Uh, the DPF was blocked with soot. Um, the inlet manifold was blocked with soot. Um, so it stands to reason that this also was blocked with soot as well. The reason why I didn't use this is because when the engine was delivered with this one, so this is the original cooler that came with this engine, which is a 72,000 mile engine. This connector in here had snapped off. It's a push fit connector, which push, pushes in the top of coolant connector. And it had snapped off and it had gone down inside the coolant jacket, which you can't get to. So I thought, oh, well, never mind. I'll just put that one on there. It was on the car originally. It won't hurt, will it? Well, obviously it did. So I managed to get that little bit of plastic out, clean the cooler out, and then I just swapped them over. So that literally... It took me an hour, an hour and a half, literally, to take the cooler off the side of the engine. Maybe I should have videoed it, but I needed to get it done. So anyway, I'm going to get the, the whatever I need, and um, we'll strip this apart. As I say, literally, it's just a few of these little, little torque bolts, and um, we'll have a look inside. 
Now there's a bit of soot in there, but these all get sooty. That's that's just what they do. So it's quite a thick layer though. So I don't think I think this is the Yeah. I think this is the out bit. Right, so that's the other end unbolted. So you can kind of see how this flap works in here. So when it closes, it closes off the cooler. And it, I'm assuming it, it bypasses it through here. Is through here right yeah so it definitely comes in this end doesn't it i can't see anything through there so i would say that that is blocked so i've just put a torch underneath there you can see i can't see a speck of light through there so I reckon that, yeah, that's definitely blocked and that was our problem. I can see one tiny chink of light, which you're probably not gonna be able to see, but one. <laughs> All right, so there you go. So that's basically how the EGR cooler works. It passes uh, coolant through there, through there, and it passes into there, and it goes through into this heat exchanger. So obviously you've got one side is air, one side is co uh, coolant. And obviously it comes back out there or out there. And that's what this does. It, it uses the coolant to cool down the, the EGR gases as they go into the engine. Okay, just for some context, this is a EGR valve slash cooler out of a Ford Focus uh, 1.6 TDCI so it's a DV6 engine so it's the same engine basically in anything of around the 2009 upwards that's 1.6 TDCI 8 valve so they put them in a lot of engines like Peugeot's even the new um, 2007 2017 Peugeot's I don't know whether they've changed this but this is from 2013 as you can see I've just split this one apart it, the channels in it are much bigger so that's obviously going to block less so i have blasted this through with some compressed air and there were some black some black soot did come out um but this is exactly the same principle we've got water and we've got um we've got exhaust gases so and that's the actual egr valve itself which wasn't too bad so this engine's done 130 125 000, 130 000 miles so it's not, I've never had a problem with one of these. So obviously it must depend on some engines and, and the design of the actual cooler itself. And this is actually a much smaller cooler, so. So there you go, there's a little quick video on uh, the PO40 EGR insufficient flow. So it's not always the EGR, sometimes it's the EGR cooler. So that's something to keep in mind if you ever get a problem yourself like this. So hope this helps someone out. Like, subscribe, loads of other videos on my channel. Check it out, see you soon.